And welcome back to Subculture. Well, it is time to turn our attention to this year's Melbourne International Comedy Festival. And the first show that we're taking a look at this year is the brand new show from comedian Callum Strafford, who's doing a show called Mozart 182, a musical comedy concerto. Callum, welcome to the show, mate. I can't wait to talk to you about this one. (laughs) Thank you, David. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a ride, this one. So, mate, I understand that this idea for this show actually came about because you were thinking about Mozart and Blink-182 at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just was thinking, I was initially thinking about, because my, my year last year was very, like, opposites, like, what, like, this was happening, then this was happening, and I'd have to, I was away, um... Um, doing um, performing in Edinburgh, then I had to get on a plane, and then as soon as I got touched down in Melbourne, I had to dash off to my teaching placement. Like it was just like all these things that were so opposite from each other happening, like one after the other. Um, things that didn't belong together. Um, again, highs and lows. Like highs can happen in your life, then the next day it can be, can be everything can completely go downhill, and that's life. You know, that's life for everybody. So I was like, how can I sort of express that in a show? And I was like, okay, what's two things that I love? I love Mozart. I have a passion for for Mozart and um, uh, playing Mozart on the piano and everything um, because I want to, basically because I want to impress people, really. Because as much as I love Mozart, I also love impressing people. So I was like, oh, that works out well. And then there's the other side. I'm like, hey, I really love Blink, too. Like, I I really love um, uh, music that this is pop punk music from the 90s. And I was like, that could not be more opposite. So I was like, okay, how do I... Um, I'm going to put those two, two together and then have fun with both those two things while just sort of, um, yeah, it's just as a way of expressing that life uh, is completely just all over the place. So how did you go about then fleshing that out into a show? Tell us a little bit about that journey, about how you had those two ideas, the mm. idea of what had been happening in your own life and how did you mm. then put that all together to flesh that out? Yeah, um, so it's happened over a long period of time. Um, I probably started having thoughts about it maybe like, yeah, last June, July. And I just took experiences from my life, like, um, uh, so there's something in there about um, one time that I bought a vape and I really regretted it and I just sing a song about vapes and everything. Um, uh, and then like doing something like, like you're on your way to a, a special, uh, event, like, I don't know, a birthday or something, but I'm listening to a true crime park podcast on the way and like how that's just com- like, that's hardly a mood setter at all. Yeah. Um, uh, so I just took experiences again. I really, I write about my experiences. Um, I took those and I just put them in the show. And I was like, okay, which one's Mozart? Which one's my name too? And then uh, I did a trial show last week and we've made lots of discoveries. Um, so I'm going to be in a Mozart costume and I'm going to be um, using uh, lots of, um, yeah, I've got a little bling costume going too and I'm going to be switching, I might be switching between the two and I will just be expressing all of this in both sort of their unique styles, like the classical style and then there's the punk, the pop punk style. And um, I'm going to be interweaving, I don't want to say too much, but I'm going to be interweaving um, both of both those artists' songs into my own composition. So it's going to be sort of um, sort of like a musical experiment sort of thing. And it's very the show is very music music heavy. And um, yes, I'm very I'm very much looking forward to doing it. Um, but I do have a run in Adelaide, and I'm gonna that's that's the first time it's going to see the light, light of day. So that's going to be very uh, very fun. But in terms of putting it all together, um, I I put it. I just put every yeah, as I said, I put everything in there that I I I, I experience and then sort of categorize it Mozart one A two sort of thing. Yeah. Awesome. So you mentioned being away last year. You actually went across to France last year and studied yes. at clown school. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about how that came about and what that experience was like. Yeah, well he's um so that school over there is uh, quite famous amongst the 
uh, comedy and acting and even music, music community, really. And especially a lot of comedians from Melbourne, I uh, think Gary Starr, I think Hannah Camilleri, um, lots of lots of comedians from Melbourne have been over there to France <clears throat> um, to study under, it's called the Philippe Gaulier Clown School, and he's, um, he's a very... Uh, experienced clown who's been doing it for years. He's 80 years old and he's still teaching and he has this sort of uh, what's called a via negativa which is a way of teaching which is he'll throw insults at you to sort of tear down your ego and then get a vulnerable performance out of you and then you can be funny. And it was very hard and but very rewarding. They're all about finding the fun and finding the pleasure and this is what this show is another massive element with this show that I'm just trying to focus on is how am I going to have fun on stage? Because if you're not having fun, then the audience won't have fun. So you've just I'm just trying to find the fun, find the pleasure, and the the sort of the um, the philosophy of play. Just having like a little child plays when they're playing with toys. Like just how do I find that? Um, that sparkle in my eyes and how am I going to play games with the audience and in terms of the, the experience itself back in France it was amazing um, again like he, he puts you through the ringer I remember um, he, him saying he, oh, what was he uh, um, he goes uh, he goes to me oh I did something that was really bad and he goes he goes to the rest of the class he goes uh, if you were on holiday with him would you say ah it is so lovely to be on holiday with you I'm having so much fun or would you want to kill yourself and then everyone put their hands up and kill themselves <laughs> so it's very it's a very but like you know he's joking like he's He's yep. throwing these sort of funny insults, and trust me, there was lots of worse ones than that that he was throwing out. Like he's a very, he's a character, and um, he's probably one of the funniest people I've ever met. So yeah. So was that a dream come true for you? Was like was that a school that you'd wanted to study at for a long time? Yeah, it was uh, sort of like a this weird thing that everyone talked about. I'm like, oh, that would be so cool to go to France, and it's not even in Paris; it's like an hour outside of Paris. Um, go to France and do like clowning and, and study clown. I'm like, that'd be such a such a random thing to do. And um, lo and behold, a few other of my comedian peers from Melbourne were thinking about doing it that year, and we all went together. And it was, yeah, it was it was a dream come true. Like, there's lots of prestigious alumni from that school. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen worked closely with him. Emma Thompson, um, lots of performers, um, and enough. I enjoyed it that much and got a lot out of it and it's completely changed the way I'm going to perform for my previous shows and enjoy it so much that I'm going back again this year in July and I'm very, very excited. So, yeah. Awesome. Now, did those insults, did they prepare you for performing in <laughs> Edinburgh? Because I've heard that the hecklers in Edinburgh can be particularly <laughs> savage. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. It, 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 it thickened my skin. So one, one thing he had is he had a little drum. And if you weren't being funny, he would go bang off. Like immediately, he would not give you the chance, the second chance. So he would... Um, yeah, he would bang and go, adios immediately, you know, thank you for that horrible moment, horrible, <laughs> you know, yeah, he would just yell that, oh, God, he's, he's so bad, you know, like, um, so I thickened my skin, and um, it actually really, because I did some, uh, I did a gig in London um, uh, soon after that, and it was a gong show, and I'd never done a gong show, and if anyone's listening who doesn't know what a gong show is, is is if you, if the audience aren't enjoying you, um, they can they have the the chance to gong you off, which is you know that could be um, you having an actual gong or in the, in this case of the show I was doing it was um, three selected audience members would raise their glass of whatever they were drinking, and so I was like, hey, and, but me before uh, doing the Goliath Clown School, I would have been terrified of doing that. But yep. me afterwards, I was like, no, nah, this is, I've, I've experienced the, the hard and the worst of it. Like, I've been humiliated before. It's going to be fine. And it was fine. It was really fun. Um, in terms of Edinburgh, um, the audiences there, I I was in a lot, I was in a lot of audiences and I was um, performing. I didn't see that heckler side of it, but I hope to return this year and hopefully do see some uh, heckler sides of it because the gigs I performed, the crowds were just like insane and were so up for it and was respectful at the same time. Um, so I unfortunately didn't get, didn't get that experience, but hopefully I will. 
this year just because I want to see what it's like. Yeah, I remember Jimmy Carr saying once about getting heckled in Edinburgh and he said because mm-hmm. of the accent and because of what they say, it normally <laughs> sounds more like a threat rather than a heckle. So, yes, yeah. yes, and there's sort of that harsh... Yeah, that harsh accent, it's, it does sound like more of that, so that's hilarious. I did, um, one gig that I did do that was sort of interesting is, uh, it's, it was called Petting Zoo, and you would just do your normal act, but uh, the two uh, guys who run it, they're from New York, uh, they'd get someone from the local zoo to bring lots of animals, and you would have an animal on you, whether it be a snake, a tarantula. I had a stick insect, and it was hilarious because I couldn't do any of my material because this stick insect would not, like, sit still, and it would just walk all over my body while I'm trying to do it, and just, that just became the game the whole time, and it was just so fun and hilarious. So, what's the Paris comedy scene like? Of course, we hear a lot about London and we hear a lot about Edinburgh, but what's the Paris comedy scene like? Paris comedy scene, well, I did... There's a group called English Speaking Comedy in Paris, and I was part of that. I don't know if about the French Speaking Comedy in Paris. I never went to any of those or didn't know if there's... Don't know if there's even that many. Um, the... It's, it's, there's a lot of Americans, um, because there are a lot of Americans in Paris, because they have, I mean, everyone has a huge love affair with Paris, but especially Americans. Um, so there is that, which is fine. I think Americans are super fun, and they're very enthusiastic, which is what you want when you're doing comedy. Um, I found them to be really good. I think, I, I don't know if I can say this on radio, but I think I, uh, did, a gig that was in a, in a venue that was formerly a sex dungeon. Like it was just okay. like, it was just so weird. These tunnels and like these little rooms. I was like, what is this place? But then one of them turned into a comedy room. Like this is pretty cool. Um, so yeah. And that was really fun. And, um, I remember doing this, um, this improvised slideshow, uh, on uh in paris and it was where uh, the ho- the organizers make a slideshow for you but you're not allowed to look at it before you go up on stage and you've just got to flip through the slideshow and present this topic um to to um the audience and you've got to pretend like you know everything about it which is an amazing concept and it was a really cool way of, of performing like i just had to again most of um my work at the clown school everyone You've got to improvise. You're often thrown up on stage like, okay, be funny. Now, you have no prompt. You have no script. They'll be just like, okay, you go up. Let's, and one exercise was, um, so I'm taking a little deviation here, um, is one exercise was that you had to, he literally put a timer on. It's like, let's see the ultimate test. This was another teacher, uh, Carlo, who was Italian. He goes, the ultimate test. Let's see how long you can be funny for. And he put a timer on. And he would, you just have to be funny. Um, so it was very much like that back in um, uh, the improvised PowerPoint show. And um, I, I mean, lots of us were were sort of battling a bit, but we did get a few laughs because sometimes the French audience can be very just sit and nod and be just a little bit like, mm, yeah, that, and rather than like just falling out of their chairs laughing. I'm just saying, I, like, I'm just saying that because I did okay, but I could have done better. But that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. right. But how does it feel now being able to come back and perform in front of your hometown audience at the Melbourne International mm. Comedy Festival? That must feel pretty good. Yeah, well, I'm just so keen to um, use everything that I learned back at the school and just, and I'm um, even just doing gigs before uh, the Comedy Festival around Melbourne. I'm just trying to practice everything I learned because it's one thing to learn all of it. But to actually get make it become second nature is actually takes a lot of practice. Um, so I've been I, I'm very excited and to because I feel like this is I'm such a more, more of a massive step closer to my voice and my my style. I think that's more the word my style as a performer now that I have these clown elements um, under my belt and I'm going to continue to explore that and hopefully a um, a Melbourne audience will be receptive to it. I think they will because there's lots of other clowns and um, musical comedians uh, in the Melbourne scene and they're all really good. So I think there is a crowd for it. And I'm just, um, this new concept, I think I'm doing something really exciting. It's about two topics that I'm just, um, you know, Mozart and Blink-182 that I'm so passionate about and passionate about and how they inform my life. And I just can't wait to have fun. Like I think I've got like, uh, this is the the clown 
the clown techniques that I learned. Like I think I've got like you have to make your costume like ridiculous. So I think I've got like six or seven different instruments that I'm playing, and it's just going to be like chaos. <laughs> so yeah, so it's gonna be cool. Awesome. Well, for all of our listeners out there, if you want to head along and see Callum's new show, Mozart 182, it is on from the 27th of March through to the 7th of April, 6.40pm each night at the Tasma Terrace, and those tickets can be purchased at comedyfestival.com.au, and we'll also put a link up for those ticket information as well on our Subculture Entertainment website. Callum, to finish off, what would you like to say to people out there who are thinking about coming along and checking out your show at this year's Comedy Festival? Um, Just if you really want to have fun and see uh, uh, someone make a fool out of themselves on stage and be a beautiful, what's called a beautiful idiot, then absolutely come along. And there's not just me, there's so many great performers all across the festival. And I want Comedy Festival to be like the Taylor Swift weekend and just the whole city's buzzing. Everyone's just going out and, and being euphoric and happy. And if you want to be euphoric and happy, come to my show and lots of other comedians like i can't think of but there's so many off the top of my head um that i can think of uh like sam campbell um jeremiah detto john walpole there's there's so many hammock anna camilleri there's just emma holland there's just so many people that are doing great comedy concudas like there's just oh there's too many people like to think off the top of my head and it really excites me and melbourne we're very lucky to have it so let's keep it going and Let's get to those Taylor Swift levels. I'm very competitive. 